Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to the sixth lecture on the series on FinTech. My name is Dr. Sudhendra Hanumanta Rao. I am the Dean of Faculty of Management and Commerce at Manipal University, Jaipur. In the previous lectures, in the first part, we looked at the basics of FinTech. What it is, how is it different, how does it affect us, what are the big changes it is bringing into the field of financial services and how is it beneficial. And then we looked at some of the key concepts or technologies involved which includes the concept of money itself. What is money, how it came about, how does it apply, how is, does it change in the area of fintech and some related concepts. We looked at securing that all that information because as I have been saying in fintech everything exists in the form of information even including money, money exists as a set of digits, digital cash for example. So, we looked at, looked at money and then we looked at securing, in securing that information and a key tool in fintech that we use to secure our information is called cryptography. Not just that, cryptography has come up, is the foundation of one of the products under fintech that is cryptocurrencies. Then we looked at the concept of risk, risk management. How, do, how does it, how, what are the relevant risks in fintech? How do we address that? How do we mitigate that? In the second part, we started looking at some of the key products or some of the key areas of fintech which we all use and many much development has happened happening in these areas. One big category of in the fintech domain, one of the six domains identified by the World Economic Forum's framework for fintech is payments. In the first part, we learned a bit about payment systems. What are payment systems? What are the fundamentals? How many types of payment systems are there? And how are they different from the previous way, ways we were doing business. So, in this session, we we'll look at another type of payment systems, these are card based payment systems, that is payment systems using some card. So, we will take a look, most of us must have heard of or you must be using things like a credit card, a debit card, phone card, things like that. So, we will take a look at card based payment systems, because they are a very big category within payment systems. As always, let us first understand what is a card a credit card or a debit card card for that matter, any other kind of card. It is a thin rectangular piece of plastic or metal, today it is mostly plastic. In fact, in many countries, we refer to credit cards or credit debit cards as plastic, we do not call them as money, we use them, we charge it to my plastic we say or metal issued by a bank or financial services company that allows card, card holders to borrow funds in case of credit cards, it is borrow to we can borrow money, actually they lend you money for a fixed period of time and in case of debit cards, we use it to charge, we used it to deduct money from our bank account and pay for the payments without carrying cash, with which to pay for goods and services with merchants that accept the cards for payments. The key element is not just that we have gotten a card issued by a bank or somebody, the person with whom we are doing business also should be able to accept the card, they will need to accept the card by means of which of pay payment process is completed. This is a typical example of a card that we have here, what we have exam is an example of a visa card. Other popular cards are the JCB, other is Japanese credit bureau, MasterCard, American Express and things like that, uh, uh, diners club all have their versions of credit and debit cards. So, this is basically the card. These are the details on that. Remember, we talked about payment instructions. Some of them are encoded into the card. It has the card's number. Each card has a number, an account number, or we call a credit card number, we say, or a debit card number. It has the banks. That, but typically, the names like Visa, Mastercard are called card associations. They handle the marketing, backend, and everything. But the actual card and checking the KYC is done by individual organizations like banks, like my credit card is from HDFC bank, 
HDFC bank does the job of evaluating me, doing the due diligence, reading my KYC, keeping track of my account and this will be the bank identification number. Every bank which issues these cards will have a BIN number by a bank identification number. Here is the name of the card, it will have my name or your name as the case may be. Expiration date, all cards have an expiration date. So, for a card to be valid, it should be within the expiration period. They constantly, most card companies renew based on once it, once the expiration period is over. And then there is a bit of ma marketing of the, uh, the card network, Visa in this case. It means a master card here. Some of them may have, a ho may have a holographic image, a shining image. And in one category of the most advanced cards today, we call them as smart cards. They will also, we will see that they will also have a electronic chip here. The holograph and the mark of the brand. Then there will be a security code called CVV number. So, whenever we use our card, often times like a pin, we are required to remember this number which is in the back of the card and enter that for the transaction to be validated. Then there is some, there is a magnetic strip here. Nowadays, they are saying we are finally, these companies are getting rid of magnetic strips. Otherwise, this magnetic strip, this black strip here encodes certain information, it stores certain information. So, when we swipe a deb credit card or a debit card to that swiper at a merchant's uh, place or in a petrol bus station or something like that, all the information is automatically read from the magnetic stripe. And there is a panel where we are expected to sign, the customer carrying the card is expected to sign. As soon as we receive the card, you are expected to call a number, get it validated and sign on the back. So, the merchant who accepts is required to match your signature with what you sign on the panel there. And in this case, the hologram is in the back, sometimes it will be on the front. And some cards may also carry the holder's photo here. So, these are the basic characteristics of a card. And typically, it is made of plastic, hence the whole thing is referred to as plastic and some of the information that it carries. So, why are the cards based systems important? Cards have been there for about 60, 70 years perhaps, bit more. So, why are they still important today? Because they are still the biggest payment tools in many countries, especially at retail. Most of the western countries introduced cards earlier. So, even today in those countries, credit and debit cards are still the biggest chunk of payment, most of chunk of payments, these, these wallet based P 2 P payments are picking up now, but traditionally and even till today, they might have stagnated, but they are still a big chunk of the payment industry. As late as 2020, the US, the equivalent of the Federal the Reserve Bank of India in the US called the Federal Reserve did a survey and it asked 1537 customers which payment systems they normally by default, what is your first choice? 28 percent said debit card is their first choice, 27 percent said credit cards and 19 percent said cash. So, if you add up, it comes to almost 75 percent of customers out of 100 used one of the three traditional measures, either they use credit card or a debit card in the case of 55 percent and in 19 percent they were still using cash. So, even as late as 2020, despite all the advances in payment systems, almost 75 percent of all transactions by retail, by consumers at the retail level was still done using traditional ways like credit card, debit card or cash. That is the reason why we need to study cards. One more uh, graphic to show you the prevalence and the interesting thing is, these are usage of credit card, debit card and cash. Green is credit card, orange is debit card, yellow is cash divided according to the customer's income. As we can see at lower levels of income, debit card transactions do dominate. As the income keeps increasing at the two highest groups of in uh, in uh, by income, credit card transactions outnumber debit card trans transactions. As customers become more and more affluent, their preference shifts towards credit card and the role of cash comes down, role of debit card also comes down. So, one more reason why we need to, most retailers would like to target their businesses at the more affluent customers, because they in the expectation that they will spend more, they are going to be more profitable and they tend to prefer 
credit cards over any other form of payment. Especially popular among affluent customers. There are various types of cards. As I said, credit and debit are only two type two types of cards. You can see here itself that there are number of variety, variety of cards here. They can be classified into what are called charge cards. We will see in detail what these are. They can be classified into what are called charge cards. Best example is American Express. Especially in the corporate world, among the more affluent people, American Express cards are very popular. They are not actually credit cards, they are called charge cards. And sometimes they can also be retail store cards or private label cards. Cards issued by a particular company valid only in that company. Like for example, if Big Bazaar includes car, introduces cards, which can only be used in Big Bazaar, it acts like a charge card. Then we have credit cards, the two most popular credit card brands are Visa and Mastercard. We have something called a credit, secured credit card, which is not very popular in India, I have never heard of it. But in the West, especially among the less affluent customers, to prove their credit worthiness, to ensure their credit worthiness, a secure credit card is issued against X amount of money kept in balance. And you can only charge the amount of money you have kept in balance there, almost like a debit card. Then what are, there are what are called purchase cards or procurement cards, sometimes these are also called corporate cards. They can only be used for corporate purchases and uh, travel and things like that. Then we have debit cards, they are also called check cards or ATM cards, these are also called ATM cards. Then we have stored value cards, cards which have certain amount of value, currency stored in them, we can use it in designated places. And as we make purchases, the value gets reduced till it reaches 0. Typically, gift cards are an example, like for somebody's birthday or some occasions, we may, we may give them a Flipkart gift card or an Amazon gift card for 5000 rupees. They can use that card, it comes in the form of a card. You can use that card to buy items worth 5000 rupees on Amazon or any other site. And there are phone cards, especially popular among the immigrant communities in the US. Instead of buying a phone, uh, phone line and paying monthly charges, buy a phone card, use a public phone, call a free call, free number like 1-800 something something and use that phone card to re replace calls anywhere in the world. So, each phone card carries certain amount of value, it is like a prepaid card for phones. Now, in India we have a mobile and make a get a prepaid connection, instead we had a card where you do not even have needed to have a mobile. Then there are other cards like membership and other cards and today the latest type of cards are what are called smart cards, almost exclusively most of the credit cards today are smart cards. So, these are some of the varieties of cards in the market. And some key terms like with every domain, each domain uses its own set of terms and jargon. So, let us look at a few terms. First term is card association, commercial and non-commercial organizations that create and market cards set rules for processing, handle back end processing. Settlements and dispute resolution, we will see why this is a key part of cards actually. So, these are commercial companies, sometimes they are networks, they are called card networks actually or card associations. Uh, for example, Visa, Mastercard, American Express are all examples of card associations. Incidentally, both Visa and Mastercard were actually formed by groups of banks in the US. There are many banks are members of these and some banks are members of both and they do all this work that they come up with new and new car cards, new rules of rules for issuing cards, new rules for using the cards and to handle all the back end accounting. Remember in the previous lecture on payment systems, we looked at payments as being just we saw only we see only two parts of it, the we are us making the payment using our card and the merchant who accepts our card and getting paid, but a lot of activity happens in the bar background checking the uh, credit balance, check whether we have uh, credit limits, is the card still valid, is it hot listed, is the transaction approved, um, various factors like that and once in a month all that uh, all the purchases need to be bunched up and billed to the customer. If they pay late, levy a fee late fee for merchants, deduct the, uh, the transaction fee and deposit the rest of the money in their account. All this activity is actually done by the card association. The banks called issuers, the next line, next item be sure, the company typically a bank which selects customers and issues them a card. So, actual card was issued and monitored and KYC done 
by banks which in turn deal by on the back end with the card associations like SBI card. I have a card issued by State Bank of India branded with IRCTC. I have a HDFC bank which they have HDFC as varieties of brands, varieties of cards. I have one of them issued by HOD cards, Bank of Baroda cards. The, the company which actually issues and monitors the card is called an issuer, HDFC bank in my case. Likewise, for merchants to accept, they also have to sign up with an organization. There is a certain amount of fee involved up from fee. When we go for a card acceptance, we will have to pay an X amount of fee. They give us the swiper, set up all the accounts for us, make sure that every, every day the money gets deposited into our account, bunch of all transactions and on the back end they work with the card associations. Typically those are banks too, like Axis Bank for example, HDFC Bank. They act, they act like payment gateways, they provide a payment gateway, something that I discussed in the previous class and they are called acquirers. Those who sign up with merchants are called acquirers, those who issue credit cards to us are called issuers. Then the concept of a billing, billing cycle, it is a period of time, typically a month for which all transactions are billed to the cardholder for payment. In my case, all the purchases I do between the 1st and 30th of the month is all given in one statement. Every monthly I get a statement of all my purchases, the payments I have made. If I declined any sales, the, um, the money which has been uh, refunded back to me and in some cases like if there is a petrol cess, the card company actually refunds that money. So, I get a list of all transactions I have done in a month from minimum, uh, date 1 to date 1 to 30th or 31st of the month or 28th in the case of February. So, every month at the end of the month, I get a card statement. Typically, it comes on the 4th or 5th of the following month for the previous billing cycle, first to the end of the month. Credit limit. Credit cards can be own only used up to certain limit. This is based by the bank and the association based on various criteria like the card holders income, their uh, uh, how promptly they have paid every month, whether they have carried any balances on their credit card. Based on that, they give a credit limit. So, if you have a credit limit of 1 lakh on your credit card, you can make purchases using your credit card up to 1 lakh in that billing cycle. Once you repay that next billing cycle, it gets reset back to 0 and you can go for 1 more lakh. And this is the concept of authentication, process by which the card is verified to be valid. So, when I give my card to the merchant, be it at the big bazaar or in a petrol bank or anywhere else where they accept credit cards, in a restaurant too, they need to verify that the card is really mine. So, there are various ways. One is my signature, they match, they take my credit card number, take my CVV and match that, check the, check the expiry date and make sure that the card is still valid. And after that, once I swipe my card, I am also asked to enter a PIN. All these things serve to check that I am the owner of the card, I am authenticating. I am authenticating, make sure that the card I am presenting is a valid card with the valid and it is it belongs to me, which I which which is what I am claiming. That is my card, I am giving it to you. Authorization is once you are authenticated, you really need to in the next step is authorize that particular transaction. For example, when I present my card to a restaurant, for example. I had dinner, the cost is 4000 rupees or 5000 rupees and I go to Big Bazaar make grocery purchases worth 15000 rupees. That particular transaction, first they need to authenticate that it is me, it is my valid card and second that process need to be authorized. That is being done by verifying that it is the right merchant. The merchant is a valid merchant who is accepting the card. The card has not been reported as stolen or hot listed and if I add this purchase, it still remains within my credit limit. Well, if I have already bought items for 60,000, if I go to Big Bazaar and charge it, swipe it for another 15,000, it is still within the limit. 60 plus 15 is 75, which is still within my limit of 1 lakh. If I have already charged 90,000 and try to swipe it again for a purchase worth 15,000, it is above, it exceeds my credit limit. So, the card will be declined. So, there are two processes that happen whenever we swipe a card, the, the entire network verifies that it is a valid credit card which belongs to me and it is still within my credit limit even if I charge at this particular transaction. It is called authentication and authorization. Some more terms, 
repudiation or ideally we saw in the morning in the previous session that the settlement of any payment is only final when the transaction is not repudiated. So, repudiation means user or a buyer declining or refusing a transaction. I get my card statement, I see something I do not recognize. So, I will say this is not something I have done. So, I can contact the credit card company Visa or MasterCard or the bank and tell them that I did not make this charge, I am declining its charge, I am repudiating that transaction. They will ask me certain questions, certain information and if they do decide that I did really not charge this, I am my reputation is valid, they will cancel the transaction, refund the money back to me and deduct the money that they have already paid to the merchant. What that part is called charge back, the charge back to the merchant. So, in their next month statement, this transaction's value will be deducted, which they had been pro provided, uh, the funds had been deposited earlier already. So, for a transaction to be complete, on the other hand, the card company and the merchant need to ensure that if I have made a transaction, I should not be allowed to repudiate. So, they use various techniques to make sure that if repudiation happens, it is valid and I cannot simply repudiate a transaction I have made, that is they should support non-repudiation also. And chargeback as I mentioned, funds charged back to the merchant and credited to cardholder when the transaction is reversed. Most processes have an automatic process, but in some cases in case of a dispute, you may have to send a dispute form, dispute resolution form to the credit card company. They will cancel the transaction and charge back the merchant. And grace period, time given to card holder to settle the charges after the billing period, usually 4 weeks or less. In For example, in my case, if I get the billing statement every month on the fifth for the previous billing cycle. I have time till the 29th of that month to make payment. So, that period in which no interest is charged up to 29th of the following month, I can pay the card in full and not be charged interest and penalties. Late fee, if I am late, by some reason I forget or I do not have money or whatever, if I do not pay <coughs> and if I do not pay a minimum amount, then the credit card company will levy as a late fee to be 50 rupees, 100 rupees, 500 rupees, what have you. In every billing uh, billing cycle, once I get the statement, they will tell us how much money I owe, what is the total number of charges and I can avoid the late fee by paying a minimum fee. Like they will say what is the minimum fee to be paid, if my billing is say 40,000, if they say minimum is 8,000, I can pay 8,000 and carry over that loan, it acts like a loan now and carry over that balance to the next month. So, next month if my billing is 20,000 the previous 32,000 gets added to this. So, it becomes 52,000 and the bank and the credit card company charge an interest for this. If I am late, even if I pay in full, I still end up paying a late fee, but I can avoid late fee by paying a minimum balance shown and carry the loan and keep paying in installments. So, in that period, the amount outstanding acts as a loan for the next month and I will get charged a interest rate. Typically, they get, we pay a very high interest rate. So, sometimes going up to 36 percent and 48 percent and things like that. So, finance charges is the interest charged in such a case. I get the billing, I get the better, the statement, credit card statement and it this does not happen in debit card. We will see how it works differently. This works only with credit card and charge cards. I get the statement, I am required to pay the minimum, I pay the minimum, I carry on to the next month. Then an interest gets charged that is called finance charges. So, in the next month's billing period, I will have my total billing charges, billing finance charges put together what is my due. Also called APR, annual percentage rate as I said, this can vary from 18 percent to 36 percent or sometimes even more. Expiry is the date imprinted on the credit card beyond which this particular credit card is not valid. The credit card company or normally my bank gives me a new credit card to be used in the period beyond. And hot list is something which is changed which is constantly shared between the, the credit card association, banks and the merchants. It is a list of cards which have been damaged or reported stolen or some invalid for some reason. So, if my card gets stolen, my, I lose my wallet, so my credit card is lost, I have up to 24 hours to report that to the bank or the credit card company. They immediately shortly invalidate it and circulate it as a hot list. So, whenever a merchant swipes my credit card, the system takes my credit card number, first checks with hot list to see if this card is 
um, invalidated for some reason. And in many countries, if a merchant notices that the card is hot listed, they are required to destroy the card immediately. So, that is called a hot list. These are some of the terms involved in card based systems. So, now let like, us look at the most common variety at least in western countries. In India, it is the second most common variety credit cards. They are called credit cards because as we as I explained just in the previous slide, if I am not able to pay every month, they lend me credit. They cannot treat the balance that I owe for that billing cycle as a loan against me. They give me credit and I have up to 4 weeks after receiving the bill where I get free credit. If I pay my, my credit card in full on the expiry on the last date shown, I actually get credit. I buy all the items this month. I do not have to pay for those till the end of the next month almost because of the grace period I get. So, that is why they are called credit card. If you do not have money, you can use it as a to gain like get credit. So, typical examples Visa or MasterCard, we will see what is an affinity card, a type of credit card, it can be a type of debit card too, but affinity cards typically are credit cards. Airline cards, many airlines issue credit cards, if you use them for a very dollar, you will get one frequent flyer mile. For example, we have J, uh, Jet Airways at JP Miles in India, we have various mileage programs, airlines to make customers try fly with them repeatedly, for every mile we fly with them or every kilometer we fly with them, they accumulate all of them. I take a flight from Bangalore to Delhi and back, the distance is about 2200 kilometers. So, if I travel make one round trip, 4400 kilometers get, deposit, get deposited to my account and if I accumulate say 50,000 kilometers, I can get a free ticket, return ticket. So, that is attraction. So, every time I fly, I stick to only jet and jet is no longer exists. I will only stick to Indigo or Vistara, somebody like that. So, there it is called a frequent flyer programs. Airlines have issued cards where not only do I accumulate kilometers when I fly, I also accumulate kilometers or miles when I use my credit card to make purchases, maybe like 1 kilometer for every 10 rupees. So, if I go to Big Bazaar, buy groceries worth 10,000 rupees using this credit card, I also get 1000 kilometers credited to my account, which will go towards getting free tickets they are called airline cards. And some merchants and hotels and all have also have come up with similar concepts. Interesting point limited in what can be done in the sense that we can use it to buy things on credit. Payment is pretty straightforward, once a month we get a billing, once in the month we get the bill or the statement, end of the grace period we pay. Many banks before issuing credit cards tend to make, tend to really evaluate the credit of the customer because we are actually giving us credit. So, if we do not pay, if I do not pay at all and disappear, they are called delinquent cards. So, they want to reduce delinquency. So, before giving a credit card, they thoroughly evaluate how credit worthy I am. What are the chances that I will del I will, I will, I will become delinquent? What are the chances that I will promptly pay every month? So, for various considerations, they thoroughly check the, it is almost like giving you a loan by a bank. Remember, when we go to get a housing loan, banks do a lot of evaluation credit card companies also do lot of evaluation to minimize delinquency, because it is a loss for them. And it says market seems to be at a saturation point, especially in the west, in the western countries pretty much everybody who wants a credit card has one and they operate on a open platform. Here are certain examples, here is Visa, Mastercard, American Express, this is actually not a credit card. There is Discover, reduced by Sears. Here is an example of a credit card issued by Delta Airlines, Delta yes, Sky Miles. I use it and I gain uh, points. Here is a credit card issued by hotel chain Marriott. So, whenever I stay in Marriott, I can accumulate, use my credit card, I can accumulate points, I can convert that point into free stays or I can even convert them into airline miles. Discover is another credit card issued by a chain which is no longer existing called CS. So, this chain of stores issued, come, came up with its own credit card actually. So, this is credit cards. So, in India, as I said, debit cards are far more popular. We have about at the last count around 2020, we had about 57 million credit cards issued compared to more than 850 million debit cards issued. So, in India, debit cards are far more popular than credit cards. So, we will take a look at debit cards too. So, debit cards, they are also called check cards, sometimes they are also in India, sometimes we call them as ATM card. 
because they can all these cards can also be used at an ATM to draw cash. Incidentally, we can draw cash on credit cards too. I can use a credit card at an ATM, take some cash advance, it is called cash advance, they tend to be very expensive. The, the moment we draw cash from an ATM using a credit card, they treat that as a loan and start charging a heavy interest. In case of debit cards, it is like an ATM card, I can use it to withdraw cash without any for all the free transactions, there is a limit on how many free transactions, right? For that number, I can draw cash without any uh, charges. So, they all started as an ATM card, it requires a PIN, now credit card also requires a PIN. So, these cards are linked to my bank or checking account. So, it is a measure of safety already. Whenever I use a debit card, the credit limit is what is there in my bank account. If I have 20,000 in my bank account, I can use the debit card to buy make purchases worth 20,000, they would not let me exceed that. In some cases, they may let us exceed by treating that as an overdraft, but in most cases, when we use a debit card, they only let me purchase uh, to the amount of balance that I have. Many customers like this feature. With credit card, we may spend money which we may not have, so at the end of the billing cycle, we may not be in a position to pay it that month. So, we will incur heavy finance charges, whereas in case of debit card, it limits to the amount that you have. So, in some cases, customers actually like this feature some of them do not. There is no credit line, but there could be an overdraft line and there is heavy fees on, on retailers also like in case of credit card has been a concern and it runs on banks net worth. I mean first the transaction happens at the bank, the money is directed from my bank from my account then goes to the back end transaction. Networks initially designed for bank transaction operates on an open platform and select use and open. So, in this case, even though it may be branded with Visa and MasterCard on the back end, other than Visa and MasterCard, there are also other networks like Plus, Cirrus, there is one called NICE, New York Cash Exchange. These all act like what equivalents of credit card associations. Maestro is by MasterCard, Interlink, things like that. So, that is the concept of a debit card. It works very much like a credit card except that there is no credit involved it gets your money gets deducted immediately. So, it is called a debit card and as I said these are very popular in India and in the previous chart as we saw the less affluent for sections either they prefer debit card or they are not they do not qualify for one because their credit rating may not be high. Credit cards are more popular among the more affluent sections of the population. So, this is a typical uh, transaction using a credit card I am the card holder. I go to Big Bazaar, I buy things, swipe my card. As soon as I swipe my card, Big Bazaar requests Big Bazaar's bank, Big Bazaar may be with Axis Bank for example. The data goes back to Axis Bank requesting authorization. This customer is trying to charge 12,000 rupees, 12,800 rupees, please authorize. So, that bank or in this case I have shown SBI, this Big, bank, Big Bazaar may have signed up with SBI cards. So, SBI contacts the association. That is, if it is a MasterCard, it contacts MasterCard servers saying requesting association. Can this transaction be authorized? The association checks with my bank, that is, HDFC Bank, is this a valid card? Is this customer's name valid? And uh, is the PIN they have entered, is it valid? Is it within the credit limit? And is it not an expired card? It asks all those questions, my bank verifies all those things and comes back saying that, okay, authorized are not authorized. So, the association tells SBI that this card is indeed, this transaction is valid and authorized and <coughs> the bank gives that message to the merchant and they print the receipt. Simultaneously, the, the bank requests for, this transaction is complete, the bank goes for settlement. SBI requests the card association for deducting the amount. So, my bank HDFC bank makes the payment on that transaction, it goes to the acquirer's bank that is SBI which deposits that money in the account of Big Brother once a day. Typically, they all bunched and deposited once a day. My bank actually they have not shown this arrow, once in a month sends me a bill for settlement, my statement and that gets, once I pay that non repudiation is not done, the transaction settlement is complete a fairly straightforward process except the amount of checks and balances which happens. The amount of checks and balances is enormous, they have gone to enormous lengths because credit card frauds 
are some of the most common frauds in the industry, credit card numbers. In fact, we see that often times we hear news that the site of Sony or site of some other company, in fact, Sony was one of the examples, was hacked into and somebody stole 10, 10 million credit cards. Somebody stole by numbers of 1 crore credit cards. Why? Because those numbers get traded. These cards get traded, they have their own use in the black market. So, credit card frauds are some of the most common frauds in the financial services industry. So, the industry, the bank, the network go to enormous lengths to make sure that the chances of fraud are minimized. That is where the cost is. They incur a lot of cost, they set up a lot of infrastructure. They have set up today uh, fraud detecting software that whenever there is any unusual activity, they tend to verify, give us a call and verify that it is indeed a valid transaction so as to make sure that chances of fraud are minimized. That is where the complexity is. In terms of usage, it is pretty straightforward. I swipe it, gets approved, I put my pin, done. Likewise, for the merchant, they sign up with the association or the acquirer, they get the swiper, they let customer swipe, enter pin, done. Once a day, they get their money. Then there is a the concept of charge bytes. When I get my statement, when I dispute a statement, when I dispute a transaction rather, it goes back to the merchant, the association tries to verify whether that is valid and then whether my contention is valid, in which case they credit me with the money and levy that charge back to the merchant called a charge back. That also has been often times used, charge backs have been often times used to commit fraud too. So, they take lot of care to make sure that whenever I repudiate a transaction, whenever I decline a transaction, it is valid. So, this is a typical. So, the next type of cards, typically these are credit cards, they are called purchase cards, procurement cards or corporate cards, these are also called corporate cards. For example, here is an example of a visa card issued by Chase for business, business preferred. This is this may be issued to Chase or Chase's own employees or to other companies. For example, there is this card issued to this gentleman called Barrett and the name of his company is Barrett Connect. In this case, it is an American Express uh, corporate card, it is issued to this company called Rexport.inc. So, these are slightly different from personal cards, it, it they allow for selective use. Like when I was with a corporate working with a corporate company, I had a corporate card. It could only be used for buying airline tickets, paying for hotel stays and buying uh, stationery and certain number of items. I could not use it for entertainment for example, I could not use it to buy groceries. So, it is meant for limited uses and so only for those uses for certain categories of goods using SIC codes. It is a category for codifying all items including items and services, hotels, fuel, I can use it to buy petrol for example. So, only for those purposes I can use this card and especially for official purposes. If I am filling petrol to my car, I am not supposed to do that. If I rent a car when I am on business travel, I fill petrol into that, I am expected to use this corporate card. There are spending limits, there are limits on daily limits, weekly limits, monthly limits by category. So, only so much we can spend on gas, only so much we can spend on hotels, various kinds of limitations can be put on this card lot of reporting is done once a month or once a week or whatever the frequency is, the card company generates enormous amount of reports and generates it to the, sends it to the corporation whichever has issued the credit card, so that they can monitor the expenses of their employees. So, the main target are business to business transaction, they can be used for purchases too. So, if I buy small value items like stationery, uh, supplies to the office, uh, supplies to our canteen or our pantry. This all small items, it is not worth raising an invoice, sending an invoice like in the corporate world getting way to be paid. Th many companies encourage their employees to use corporate cards for all such purchases. Copy, for example, if I made a report, I needed to get copy, get it copied in the nearby copying store, I will use this credit card to pay for such transactions. So, be it business to business transactions and corporate travel. They also operate an open platform, things like that. They are credit cards with except that with these certain limits and meant for only certain purposes. So, they are called corporate cards. The next type of cards are what, is, what are called stored value cards. That is these cards, they are not open ended like I cannot buy up to the credit limit or I cannot buy up to my bank balance in the case of debit card. They, the cards come with certain amount of money stored in them. 
as I keep buying the value of the value stored keeps going keeps going to 0. So, sometimes for example, example is a flip card gift card. If I give you a 1000 rupee flip card gift card, you can go to flip card buy items using this card up to 1000 rupees. As you keep buying the value goes to 0 at some point it reaches 0 or prepaid phone cards as I mentioned. This is an example of a 10 dollar card made meant for making calls to India from the US. So, it says India prepaid phone card no connection fee you can make calls up to 10 dollars. Beyond that you have to buy a new card. So, that value of 10 dollars or 1000 rupees is stored in the card itself in some form the magnetic strip or the this thing. So, examples of stored value cards are gift cards, phone cards, mall cards like shops many shops uh, especially in the US have issued their own stored value cards. Same thing with gas cards chains of gas stations or petrol stations. The here is one example Radio Shack used to be an electronics company somebody may have, may have given a gift show, a gift card to somebody worth 25 dollars using this card I can go to a Radio Shack and buy a pair of headphones or something things like that. It is valid only in Radio Shacks only up to 25 dollars. So, these are open and selective use from store from chain to a mall. So, this can be open cards, cards can which can be used anywhere in any store which accepts them or they can be closed. For example, this card can only be used in Radio Shack, this card can only be used at Flipkart. So, we have generally great gift cards, we also have specific uh, the chain or store related gift cards. Funds are free loaded onto the card at, and once spent the card can be disposed spent. <coughs> <coughs> Here they do not have details like the receiver's number, name, card numbers, they are anonymous in that sense. And most operate on the card with closed what is called a closed platform. Some cards, however, give you a cho choice of topping up. That is, this card may be worth 1000 rupees, I want to buy something worth 1200. So, this card gives me a choice of using this card for 1000 rupees, paying the 200 rupees in some other form through a wallet or a credit card or even cash if I am physically in a store. So, I mean some of the cards allow you, allow you the choice of a topping up. And this is the way it, uh, the transaction happens. The cards are preloaded loaded with points, merchant requests transactions verifies the card. So, that from the merchant it goes to the acquiring bank. The acquiring bank the transactions the process like a debit, the card is validated and with stored hose the value is in a, a, a value is confirmed it sends to the issuing bank whatever is the bank that has issued the card it sends a request for authorization of the transaction it processes the transaction post to statements and authorizes once it authorizes the acquiring bank tells the merchant accept it then the, during the settlement the amount of transaction is deducted from the card. So, if the card is of a really high value used over a period of time we may get monthly statement saying that what is the remaining balance within the card. So, this is how the stored value cards. So, this is the third or third variety of cards we are seeing credit card, debit card, fourth actually corporate card, store, stored value card and some cards allow for recharge or a top up. Membership cards, just to keep business with ourselves we can give a membership card, it does not have credit or debit we can just use it whenever you buy you give us this card, we will try keep track of all your purchases and reward you with gift points for example. Reliance Smart has its own card, when, whenever we go we show that card we get certain discounts because we are a member. This is a way to retain customer loyalty, sometimes they are also called as loyalty cards. This membership cards are also called loyalty cards, if you buy items worth certain amount we may get something free gift, we may get a discount things like that. For example, here is a card issued by the store Metro. You have this cash and carry wholesale store in India called Metro. It is a loyalty card from Metro. Whenever I go, I give them this card as a membership. Based on that, they let us buy, make purchases and also reward me for a certain amount of big purchases. So, typically, these are given for free just to retain customers. There is no membership fee involved. Whereas, with credit cards, there may be an annual fee. American Express always carries an annual fee. It just contains some details like account number, membership and things like that. They offer discounts or special access area only for those who have. It is used for activity tracking and purchasing. They have a simple magnetic strip or a barcode. It is more like being membership of something, keeping loyalty of customers more than anything else. 
it op operates on a closed platform means it is only valid in the issuers uh, establishment. This card is only valid with Metro. This card is only valid with within Harvard for example and it is mainly used for used as a loyalty card or frequency tracking. Membership or it is also called the other type of membership card is what is called an affinity card. This is used these are typically credit cards used for very exclusive membership every exclusive groups clubs for example, exclusive clubs we want to maintain their customers we want to make them feel special. So, we issue an affinity card this is an example sorry I made a mistake this is a loyalty card this is an affinity card it is only issued to alumni of Harvard we belong to that special group it is it, it works like a regular credit card, but it is only issued to those because some uh, the terms are waived the fees may be less KYC norms may be relaxed and we can use this card everywhere and sometimes if you use this card we may get special discounts the regular costs incurred within the transaction is shared the commissions acquired by MasterCard in this case a portion of it is donated to Harvard. So, I have this matter of pride I am a alumnus of Harvard. So, I carry the Harvard card pr with pride and whatever purchases I make it helps Harvard because some of the money gets deposited to Harvard. So, they are regular credit and debit cards open only to closed groups. In fact, I did have a uh, affinity card for my high school. I went to a residential high school standard chartered issued a specific credit card only for alumni of my high school. They try to exploit our affiliation typically members of these clubs tend to be affluent customers. So, these credit card companies catch them because their cost of marketing is reduced they have lower marketing costs the member body and it is typically aimed at aff affluent members like members of Harvard for example and the profit is shared with the affiliated organizations. So, we have store cards or membership cards mainly used for loyalty then we have affinity cards used to create that sense of belonging exploit that to reduce your marketing cards. So, this is another variety of cards and then the fastest growing variety is what is called smart cards today. This is an example of a exclusive smart card issued by Lakshmi, Lakshmi Vilas bank and these cards actually can do many more things other than being used as a credit or a debit, a debit card they can do many more things we will look at some of them. These are multifunctional they can act as a debit card a stored value it can be both a credit card and a stored value or credit card they can be very simple cards to very complex cards they are very good for security the security features involved is very high they have a very, very high degree of not easy to uh, replicate them. So, they have a high degree of security and fraud prote protection these require special readers today most swipers can read um, these uh, smart cards there are swipers which is like we might have seen that uh, the device you do not have to swipe them you just have to bring it and flash at them they are called proximity cards they are contact cards or proximity, car, proximity cards uh, contactless cards and contact cards contactless cards are the ones where they bring the device you just show the card there it reads all the values thanks to this chip there. So, they are called contactless cards it operates on all kinds of platforms can have it can work with multiple currencies it can use store points it can store affinity points it can cause frequent fire miles it can store my credit limit it can store it uh, it, it can store my uh, stored value the gift card. So, it can work as a multipurpose card and, and they are highly secure it is because of this chip let me see because of this chip which is embedded in the card this chip the smart card resembles a credit card in size and shape, but inside it is completely different a silicon chip beneath a contact plate we can this is the plate we can touch there is a chip below that the sil silicon chip is a small computer with 8 to 64 bit microprocessor some of these chips are as power powerful as some of the earliest PCs like we had a Tandy and things like that some of these small these thin devices are as powerful they have as much computing that is why they can do all these things they can verify my signature they can verify fingerprint so they can some of them can verify fingerprint they store all my information they can store enormous amounts of information it has the same processing speeds as old computers such as Tandy. So, a smart card includes a chip and the details of the chip are show, shown in the previous card. So, for example, it has so many areas it has these are all various types of memory chips inside 
they all do certain different different activities there is a part of it is also a processor built into that. We must have heard of the term CPU those we use computers we heard the term CPU it is a small elementary CPU built into that. So, it is like a small thin computer which keeps track of all these things it can also store all that information in an encrypted form remember one way to save information my personal information credit card number balances um, frequent flyer miles all those details are stored it, it stores in an encrypted form. So, these are probably today the most common type of cards go check your credit card or a debit card you might find this chip on that the smart chip it is called a smart chip or a smart card. So, these are the most they have replaced pretty much every other card for a variety of reasons and the cost also has come down for a period of time. And within that there are certain uh, um, uh, varieties the simplest types of smart cards are what just have a memory card they just store this information in some encrypted form. So, the rest of the work should be done by the reader whether it is a proximity reader or whether it is a swiper it reads the data from the memory, but it is saved stored safe it is an encrypted form. So, memory cards also are quite safe. So, the reader has to read that information from the chip and do the processing whereas, those the contact list cards can be memory cards or processing cards the other type of cards other than memory is they have a processor also they can do things like biometrics and all they can read biometrics they can do check the proximity they can verify that the swiper the swiper is a valid swiper too somebody may bring a, a counterfeit swiper and swipe try to swipe your details they can verify that also. So, the processing cards simplest is memory cards the others are with processors both can be with contact we have to swipe it or it can be contactless we just bring the device flash it it reads the data there are combination ca cards there are some things called transponders I have key fob where by press of a button we can send that information using a version of wi fi and these like computers they have their own operating systems like we have a java card something using voltos operating system microsoft windows for smart cards. So, there are specific operating systems to run on these simple processors. So, smart cards are the safest card devices in the market today they can go from something simple which just stores your information in a safe form to very complex smart cards which can do all these processings including checking that the swiper is valid. So, this is another variety of. So, just briefly look at how the processing happens we already have looked at how card processing happens let us take a more and more look this is typically how transactions happen with every credit card and how does it work maintaining an elaborate extensive secure and reliable system consists of servers networks point of sale units the swiper or the uh, register user databases required for cards is an expensive process that is the key function of this card networks visa mastercard american express discover they maintain all these systems that is where that is why they are so elaborate so expensive and so costly. The card associations along with the issuing banks processors and hosts build and maintain this infrastructure the costs involved are recovered by a number of ways there are number of ways in which they charge and get they give us all these facilities they give us the convenience at a cost and they recover that cost in various ways. So, this is an example again just to repeat the customer we can go to a merchant's website it is not a in person transaction we go to the website we enter our credit card details along with the OTP pin all those details from the merchant site the data go to a payment gateway from payment gateway that data goes to data goes to the the acquirer the merchants acquirer from there it goes to the network whether it be visa mastercard or what have you for authorization that checks with the customers bank to see whether this transaction can be authorized the bank approves that uh, transaction then it goes to the acquirers bank the acquirer bank once it is authorized deposits that money it approves the transaction deposits that money to the merchant through the gateway. So, and the transaction completes typically transaction happens first the receipts get printed the money gets deposited through the payment gateway typically once in a day and the this is the flow of information step 9 money gets deposited from my bank to the merchants bank account this is the flow of information the green arrows are the flow of money first authorization happens 
then the transaction gets completed, money is transferred through the network and the final settlement is done. All the four steps of a payment are taken care of. So, I mentioned that maintaining this elaborate network, yes, let me briefly touch upon that point. At every step, there are so many links. For example, this information goes over the internet. This may go over a private network, very secure, but this is going in an open internet. So, there are trans transactions in between which may be going over the internet. So, they have to build elaborate structures to make sure that at every point, they make sure that information cannot be stolen. It transmits safely. They make sure that the servers are always up. I should be able to use my credit card at midnight and still gets authorized and money gets deposited as per the green arrows, the 10 steps. So, all this establishment, all this establishment, all this checking, all the software, all this constant monitoring costs money. So, that is a lot of costs involved in credit cards. So, the costs involved which are recovered from us and from the merchants in various ways. One thing is some of the cards charge an annual fee. To maintain the card, I may have to pay 1000 rupees a year or something like that or I have to buy certain amount of transactions in which case the fee may be waived. That is one way these banks and processors and card companies recover the cost. And acquirers, we sign up with the merchants, they charge a transaction fee. MasterCard and Visa charge something between 1.2 to 3 percent to merchants. So, if I do a transaction worth 1 lakh with a merchant, up to 3000 may go to the bank and the credit card company. Merchant will get only 97 percent, 97,000. So, some of the merchants will tell us if the transaction is too big, they will say we will charge you 2 percent extra. They do that to cover this cost. American Express charges are higher, it goes from 2.5 percent to 5 percent. Discover card is a bit lower, 1.2 to 4 percent. And Ma MasterCard and Visa issuing the banks, this is charged by the networks. The banks get a part of it, the banks get a part of this fee per transaction, get a cut of the interchange between 0 0.03 percent to 1 percent based on size of issuing volume. Acquiring banks, the banks which deal with the merchants also get a part of this, get a cost of the interchange fee plus sometimes a processing fee between 0 0.002 percent to 1 percent. So, all the parties recover their cost either from us, the card holders by levying a annual fee or per transaction they can require money from the merchants and they get a share out of that. Other companies are there which do the processing, they also charge a, charge a fee, they range between 1 cent to 25 percent, 25 cent per transaction. Corporate cards charge yearly fees and reporting and filtering support. If I use a corporate card, not only merchants pay these fees, my company which has given me the corporate card, per year they may give 50,000 to 200,000, 2 lakh dollars as a fee to get the reporting, to monitor the type of transactions make sure that I am using the card for valid only corporate purchases and they get reports out of that. For that facility, the company, my company may pay between 50,000 dollars to 2 lakh dollars. On top of it, if I am late, they levy a late fee. If I am late, they levy an interest charge for the amount that is owed to me. If I take cash advance, it is treated as a loan, interest is charged. This is one more way in which this entire ecosystem, the car network system tries to recover their cost. And indeed, the card networks, both Vista and MasterCard are highly profitable. This is one of the drawbacks of credit cards and debit cards. These charges are levied to debit cards too, not just credit cards. So, but these cards typically go only for credit cards. So, that is why cards tend to be expensive affairs, one of the drawbacks of this system. What are the advantages? Convenience, I do not have to carry money. So, if I lose my wallet, I do not lose money. I can immediately report, immediately report it to the card company. So, if a, somebody uses it in an unauthorized manner, I do not incur the loss. I can get a replacement immediately. Second cards are accepted globally. So, if I travel to US, I do not have to bother about converting my rupees to dollars and pay there. My credit card company takes care of the conversion. I can use my same credit card in the US and it does the conversion of conversion from rupee to the merchant gets paid in dollars, I get billed in rupees credit, I get some credit. I can get period of one, one month of billing period plus the grace period period in which I do not have to make the payment in the case of credit cards. 
So, by constantly paying my cards regularly, I can also build a credit history. So, when I go to apply for a mortgage to a bank, I can show look all my credit card payments have been on time, I am a very good customer. We can control spending, every month we know how much we have spent. We do not have to do our own accounting, they do it for us. If I use my credit card once a month, I get a billing statement or in case of debit card, not only do I get a statement, it also prevents me from billing, buying more than what is there in my account. Same with stored value cards, I can only buy what is there stored in the card. In case of corporate cards, it reduces their administration. They do not have to monitor all their employees purchases on a purchase by purchase basis. The credit card company gives them a monthly statement, which makes their job of accounting much easier. Then there is protection, protection against loss, against theft, fraud detection, chargeback. Sometimes we can even buy insurance on our credit cards. If we cross certain limits to avoid paying more, I can buy insurance on the EMI and things like that. So, there is a lot of protection built into the system. In addition, they offer some other attractions like bonus points. For every 150 rupees I buy on my credit card, one point gets credited to my account and if the pro and there is a catalog for 10,000 point accumulated points, I can get a piece of luggage free. I can get some uh, personal uh, items like uh, aftershave and perfume, um, items of clothing, various benefits I get by accumulating those points or I can even donate that points to charity. So, we can get using those bonus points, we can get merchandise, sometimes we can get cash back. For 10,000 dollar rupees worth of purchases, I may get 200 rupees deposited back into my account. There may be special offers, Raymond offers 25 discount for these credit card holders, Reliance offers 5 percent discount for users of this credit card like that. They may give frequent flyer miles for all the purchases we make, you can get free tickets. They will, uh, one important thing, one interesting thing is lounge access. For people who travel a lot, say if I go to my hometown, I may have to spend 4-5 hours in an intermediate airport like Hyderabad or Mumbai or something. So, instead of waiting in the passenger lounge, there are exclusive lounges where they have refreshments, good, uh, good facilities to relax. If I have a credit card, my credit card can give me free access to that lounge. So, these are some of the benefits they give, but downside is there is a big cost involved. All the transactions are quite costly but these are some of the benefits that they give us, some of them direct, some of them indirect. Disadvantages, cost, that is an annual membership fee. If I am late, the penalty, late fee can be very heavy and the interest charges on the amount which I had to pay is treated as a loan can be also be very high. It can go up to from more than 18 percent often and many cards sometimes to waive that annual membership fee, they may require me to buy items worth I may have to make a minimum of 1 lakh worth of purchases in a year. They may have minimum requirements to avoid certain fees. For merchants, there is an initial setup fee and per transaction there is a fee between 1 to 3 percent, which can be very significant. In many businesses, the, the profit margin if it is 10 percent, 3 to 4 percent of it will go away in charges to the credit card companies. And fraud, despite all the measures they take, Credit card fraud, frauds are some, even today one of the most common financial crimes. So, there is always this risk that we may lose it, it may get, mis, it may get uh, misused. And accumulation of debt, especially in the case of credit card. If you do not make that payment every month, if you only pay the minimum, the balance keeps increasing fast because the rates of interest are high and we may make more purchases and we can get caught in a debt trap. And the interest rates are Every time you get a balance statement, you will get if my total charges are 50,000, it may say minimum due is only 8,000. So, it may seem attractive, let me just get 8,000 and get away from that. But the remaining 42,000 attracts very high rate of interest rates. So, we should not fall into the trap of paying only the minimum. These are some of the drawbacks of using cards, specifically credit cards. And one last point I want to make, I wanted to say about American Express. American Express is not a credit card, it is called a charge card. If I use American Express, at the end of the month, I will not get a grace period. I am expected to pay the full amount. So, in that sense, American Express is, it is mainly for convenience. A lot of places accept American Express. So, it is a charge card. It is slightly different from it. So, these are some of the disadvantages of cards. Cost to have us, cost of merchants, possibility of fraud, accumulation of debt, high interest rates. In general, some the convenience outweighs these 
disadvantages that is the reason why many of us choose to get a credit card or a debit card uh, various other cards. One last point I wanted to make this is about American Express. As I mentioned in the beginning that American Express is not a credit card, it is what is called a charge card. For example, this one it is a business American Express, even general American Express, it is not a credit card, it can be accepted by merchants exactly like a credit card. All the validation check all this happens, once the statement is given to us at the month in case of a credit card we will have a grace period, I get credit for that period to pay back that amount. American Express is what is called a convenience card or a charge card, we are expected to pay the bill in full the moment we receive the statement. It otherwise it works exactly like a credit card except you do not get that grace period, there is no credit involved, it is a convenience, it is for convenience and prestige. So, when we get the statement we are expected to pay, it offers other additional benefits like free access launch, la uh, access to launches and things like that, but it is different. American Express also has a credit card of its own but the basic American Express card is what is called a charge card, it is not a credit card. With that we come to the end of the sixth lecture, this lecture was broadcast on channel 16 on Swayamprabha program, thank you.